Hello guys and welcome to geek for geeks In this video we are going to download and install Go on our local machine and work a little bit with packages in Go. I hope you are excited so let's get started. First let's install Go on our development machine. Let's head over to golang.org. Some think the site looks old school but it's fine for us as long as we can download Go's packages. So, if you are on this site, you will see a download go button on the right. Just click on it. There, you can see a section called featured downloads. Since I am on my windows machine and so are most of you guys, I will download the release for Microsoft Windows. Just click on the download link. The procedure is same for Mac and Linux users as well. Just download the release for your operating system. So. My download has started and I will be back once the download is complete. Now my download is complete. Let's just double click to open it and follow the prompt to install the Go tools. A quick side note. When installing Go, make sure the destination folder by default is in the C drive that is C backslash Go. All you need to do is click next a couple of times and you are all good to go in this installation. Now if you are on Windows. Just make sure you head over to the environment variable by going under the properties under this PC. Then go to the advanced system setting under that click the advanced tab and click on the environment variable. There make sure you have go path set under the user variable and go root set under the system variable. If you have installed go in a different directory make sure you have the proper directory mentioned here. A quick note, if the installation did not work, just leave a comment below so that the community can help you. It's the same procedure for Mac and Linux users as well. If you are on Mac, the package installs the Go distribution to slash user slash local slash Go. Just make sure the package puts the slash user slash local slash Go forward slash bin directory in your path environment variable. All you need to do now is restart any open terminal session for the changes to take effect. If you are on Windows, the installation is the same by default. The installer puts the Go distribution in the C backslash Go as already seen above. Even here, you may need to restart any open command prompt for the changes to take effect. To make sure you have downloaded and installed Go properly, just open up the command prompt and type out go space version then hit enter this should return the version of go installed on your system once again if you are facing with any issues in the installation just leave a comment below so that the community can help you with that done we are just one step away from writing our very first go program on our local machine but in order to write any go program we need to have a text editor there are a ton of options to choose from but for the purpose of this course, we will be using GoLand by JetBrains. So for that, let's head over to JetBrain.com. There under the tools section, we will choose GoLand. Once you are on this page, you can see a download button which says you can download a 30 day free trial of this editor. I prefer you download this so we can together explore the ease of writing Go programs. Although. You may choose from many alternatives like Sublime Text, Visual Studio Code which are also a great text editor for Go programming language. Just click on the download button and the download will start right away. The downloader will select the appropriate operating system and download the installer. I will be right back once the download is complete. Now my download has completed. Just double click on it and follow the prompt to install the IDE. Once you are in the installation option section. Make sure you select the 64-bit or 32-bit version as per your operating system. Then make sure you check Add Launcher DIR to the path. Finally check the box that says Create Association. Then click Next. Once the installation is done, you may need to reboot your system for the action to take place. Well, now that I am back after a reboot, double click on the GoLand to open it. Now let us create a new project called awesome project and under the go root select go 1.11.5. This is the current stable version of go at the time of recording. Now 
you are all good to start coding Go program on your local machine. If you have any queries, just leave a comment below. And now that our installation is done, let us understand a little bit about packages. A Go program is split into several libraries called packages. And we have seen in the previous video that each file begins with a package declaration. Packages are often used to set up a library for other programs to use. But there are special packages that provide a starting program for Go to run, the main package. We see this here at the start of our Allo Go sample program. Following the package declaration, each Go file includes an import statement, which states the name of several other packages that it needs to import. Once you have imported a package, you can use a function, constant, variable and other things within your current file. Then following the import statement comes the actual package content. This consists of variable, function and various other things you want your package to include. Anything that you declare up here at the package level will be accessible elsewhere within this package. Again, if you are writing a Go program that is going to be run from the command line, there is a special starting point. Basically, when a Go program starts running, it looks for a function named main and invokes it. To refer to the names of variables, constants or function that we have imported from another package, we need to qualify the name. So, for example, this println function was imported from the format package. To use it, we need to qualify it by placing a format package name before it. So, we say fmt followed by a dot and then the name of the function that we want to call from the other package. If we were to write a function elsewhere in this package though, let's say a function named other function and we want to call this from here within our main function, we wouldn't need to qualify that name since it's here in the same package. We can just say other function. Let's try creating another Go program that uses a couple of different packages. Since this is a program that is meant to run directly from the command line, we are going to put it in the main package again. And now I am going to use a slightly different form of the import statement so that we can import two different packages. You will notice that I put parentheses here at the end of the import line and I am going to include a couple different lines here with the name of the couple different packages I want to import. So as before, we are going to import the format package so that we can use its print line function. And then in addition to that, I am going to import the math package so that we can use a couple of functions from that. Now up here, outside of any function, we are working at the package level. I am going to declare a variable here. We will talk more about variables a little bit, but any variable that I declare here is going to be visible within any function in the package, here in the main path. So I am going to declare a variable named some number and I will assign it the initial value of 2.32. Now let's create a main function again. Remember, this will be kicked off as soon as our program is run. I will create a main function and let's call a couple of functions from the math package. I am going to be calling the ceiling function first. Remember, we need to qualify the function name with the package name since we are getting this from another package. And then I will be calling the ceiling function CEIL, that's an abbreviation. And as I mentioned, the sum number variable was declared at a package level. So we can access it from here within the main function. So I'm going to type my number and that will round my number to the next whole number. I'm then going to take the result of that and I'm going to assign it to another variable called roundup. Now since this variable was defined within a function, it's going to be accessible only here within the main function. We will be talking about the variable scope in the future videos. Then. Let's call another function from the math package. I'll call math.floor which rounds off the number down to the nearest whole number. And then we will assign the result back to another variable named round down. Then 
we will just print both of those numbers out. So we will call the format package print line function and we will pass it round up and round down. Save that. Let's try running it real quick. Go run temp.go which is what I have named my file and it prints out 3 and 2. The first value here is the result of rounding 2.32 up to the nearest whole number and the second value here is the result of rounding it down to the nearest whole number. Unlike in some programming languages, it's actually compile error to import a package and then not use it. Large programs tend to accumulate many unused library import which slows the compile time. So Go doesn't want that in order to help your development team keep your app compilation fast. So let's try importing another package into the program here and then we won't actually use it. So up here in the import statement, I'm going to add the time package. Now let's try running it down here on the console and actually we will see a compile time error which says imported and not used time. So as I was saying, make sure to only import packages that you are going to actually use in your program. If we remove the time again and rerun the program, it should run properly. To define a new package, you simply create one or more .go files within a single directory. Each file needs to begin with the package declaration, which includes the name of the package. A package name should be all lowercase and by convention, it should be a single word if possible. Then. Within the package body, you declare one or more constants, variables or function that you want your package to include. Constants, variables or function that are named with capital letter are exported from your package and that means they will be accessible by other packages. But if a constant, variable or function is named with lowercase letter, it will be unexported and that means that you cannot use it from another package. So these two constants up here, their name begin with capital letter. That means they will be visible from another package. And this one down here, that's not ready for public use. So it's named with lowercase letter and that means it will be unexported. Well, that's it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, leave a like and see you in the next video. Happy coding till then.